We want to take you now to Atlanta, where officials are discussing the status of the 2022 midterms. Let's watch. On this nation, something so unique in human history, it's truly divinely inspired. That said, it takes people, lots of people, very hardworking people, to make it happen. So I want to give credit first to our elections team here in my office that is led by our director, Blake Evans. The Deputy Director, Dr. Jesse Harris, and Michael Barnes, our Director of the Center for Elections. Their, their team has done amazing work, and they worked with the greatest county election teams that I think our nation has to do the tough, on-the-ground work of running polling locations, processing voters, and counting the votes. And speaking of processing voters, we had an average speed of processing voters at the polls that was simply amazing. We saw processing speeds of 48 seconds and it actually dipped down to 47 seconds for a few moments. It was that kind of processing speed that led to two minute average wait times you know, across the state. I have a screenshot of it, anyone wants to see it later. I read online that there was a person who wanted to test our line warming law. So he loaded his car with boxes and cases of bottled water to give the voters in line. So he started driving around and his problem was he couldn't find any lines. And so he even said in the article, quote, the system is running so smoothly today that no one lined up in the sun. So that is tremendous to see that kind of responsive and good results that we had at the county level. And I know all of you are probably voters also, and you probably had that same fantastic experience. And the credit for that goes to the counties and it goes to the voters. The voters took record advantage of pre-election day voting. They had shattered the records for both absentee by mail and early in-person voting in a midterm. And we have seen that the counties almost fully complete the county, and it's only a little after 2 p.m. on Wednesday. We see less than 10,000 voters to potentially be added to the count outside of the handful of votes that can be accepted by Monday, November 14th. Most of the races have a clear winner. In fact, B. Wynn and I spoke last night and she graciously, graciously conceded. And I thank her for that. That's the way it's supposed to be. We need all candidates who come up short to acknowledge it and to come back and fight within our system another day, if that's their so choice. There is one race in our state that is going to be moving to the December 6th runoff. That is the race for the United States Senate between Senator Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker. Our office has already begun the behind scenes work to be, start building the ballots. So ballots are being built as we speak and counties are making preparations. So some specifics for the process. Voters can request absentee ballots now through Monday, November 28th. There are about 150,000 voters who will receive an absentee ballot because they are on our absentee ballot rollover list. These people are either 65 or they're disabled. Our absentee ballot request portal is now open. Early voting must begin no later than Monday, November 28th in all counties. We do anticipate that some counties are, may likely have Saturday voting following Thanksgiving, as well as on November 26th. We are working with the counties to find out what their plans are on this front and as soon as possible so that their voters can make the best plans. This will be a very heavy lift for our counties because it's a four week runoff period, but I have confidence they will take all the t measures required to rise to the task. While we are working preparing for the runoff, we all have our obligation to close out the November 8th election. Counties must certify by Tuesday, November 15th by, 5, by 5 p.m. Then we move to the risk limiting audit. We will, quote, roll the dice, so to speak, on Wednesday, November 16th. Then the audit must be complete by November 22nd. And the state must certify by Friday the 25th. That's the day after Thanksgiving. It's a lot of work, 
but that's how the machinery of our democratic republic works. We welcome it because we know at the end of the day, everyone wants to know that we have honest and fair elections, and we do. I ask the voters to come out and vote one last time. We have no control over how many campaign ads our voters are going to see over the next 30 days, but we'll make sure that we have honest and fair elections. I want to thank the voters. I want to thank you for your strong participation. I want to thank you for just being so friendly and uh, really working with the system. Uh, we only had seven precincts out of 2,700 that didn't finish yesterday and had to extend past you know, the 7 p.m. deadline. I want to thank the election workers. They worked long days yesterday and they'll be working some long days ahead. I want to thank the poll workers and I want to thank all of their families who support them. And a special thank you to our team. Thank you, and I will take your questions. Yes, ma'am. Well, you've been listening to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. We heard him reassuring voters about uh, the integrity of the process. They're now in a four-week runoff, and he said that he has confidence in the counties and the machinery of our democratic republic. That's right. You're seeing on your screens the results. Neither Raphael Warnock nor Herschel Walker reached 50 percent of the vote in Tuesday's midterm, and therefore the runoff election will take place uh, December 6. One interesting detail mentioned there was that the average wait time to vote yesterday was about two minutes. So they are really trying to emphasize that as far as they can see, the election took place as planned, and now they're continuing to follow policy and moving to a runoff election. So 